you okay, dude? And I don't know the address of your emergency. And my friend just fell and he, he hit his head hard. There's a ton of blood. He was longboarding and he fell. He hit the helmet too. He has been put it on this one time. He's breathing and he's moaning. My 14-year-old son Gavin skateboards every day and wears a helmet maybe 20% of the time. And he thinks helmets are uncool. How can I convince my son that wearing a helmet is the smartest and coolest thing he can do. More than 200,000 people are treated every year for sports-related head injuries. I see it all of the time in the ER. Parents, I want you to listen up because many, in fact, most of these injuries could be avoided. That was Heidi, who is here with her son, Gavin. Welcome to both of you. Hello. You're a pretty good skateboarder. Thanks. Yeah, you've got some good moves. I'm impressed. But would it be fair to say, Gavin, that part of skateboarding, you're very good at it, is you, you want to look and feel cool out there. Yeah. You probably think you're invincible, right? <laughs> yeah. You're young. Probably haven't seen anything too, too bad, right? No, just a couple of, like, little scrapes and stuff. Will you come up here with me? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so... You know I'm an ER doctor, right? Yeah. You know I see a lot of bad things, right? Yeah. I want you to watch this, okay? Right. And I want you to pay very close attention to it. I was found behind Kyle in his car, and he was probably going about 25 miles per hour on his longboard. Out of nowhere, the longboard just flew out from underneath his feet. He just fell backwards and landed on his head. I didn't really think anything of it because he fall all the time longboarding. So I hopped out of the car, and that's when I realized there was probably something wrong because I could hear him, and he was doing this weird um, moaning. I try to get Kyle to respond. I try to get him to squeeze my hand, you know, say my name, anything. But he wasn't very responsive. And I don't know what's the address of your emergency. My friend just fell and he, he hit his head hard. There's a ton of blood. He was longboarding and he fell. He had the helmet too. He didn't put it on this one time. He's breathing and he's moaning. Oh. They actually put me into a drug-induced coma. Next thing I know, it's about three and a half weeks later, I'm waking up, I'm strapped to a bed in the hospital. I have no cognitive memory of whatsoever within that whole day, going up the hill with Mike. They ended up doing a, a CAT scan. They come to find out that my brain was swelling at an immense level. They performed the surgery, they started counting the fractures in my skull. They stopped counting at 10. Even with all the fractures that were there, there still was not enough room for my brain to expand. Roughly about 80% of my skull was removed. And they actually took me off the meds to take me out of the coma before they actually put the skull back in. Kyle, can you wake up a little bit? Open your eyes. Can you look at Dad? Open your oh, eyes. Oh, you're doing good. Now, oh. I'm in. We love you, Kyle. Good job. I'll take it a walk. There you go. You're doing good. The accident has affected my memory. I played the guitar for roughly 15 years. I picked the guitar up now and it sounds like I just barely started. I've been driving since I was 16 and I can't drive. I was a very independent person, but now I'm under the care again of my parents. I wear a helmet 99% of the time making the absolute stupid move to not put the helmet on that one time has literally changed my life. Kyle's here today because he wants to talk with you, okay? All right. Kyle wants to teach you something that he learned the hard way, and hopefully you won't have to learn the hard way. So I want everyone to give a warm welcome to Kyle. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome. How's it going? How's it going, Gavin? Good. Good. So you, uh, you've been skateboarding for a while, huh? Yeah. Why do you not wear a helmet? I don't even know. Just when I leave the house, I don't really, like, think of wearing a helmet. I just go. <laughs> yeah? What do you think your friends think of helmets? Not cool. Not cool. As I talk to kids about wearing helmets, that's the number one response. They're not cool. Yeah. Well, the important thing to remember, though, Gavin, and I, you need to know this, are you a cool kid? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The helmet might not be cool, but the fact is, I'm already cool. 
And, and you can actually, believe it or not, because you're a good skateboarder, you can make wearing a helmet cool because mm -hmm. all those kids that you're trying to impress by w not wearing a helmet, you think they're going to come visit you in the hospital if you have a head injury? The answer is no, they're not. Mm -hmm. And Cal, it's been four months for you, right? Yes, sir. You look great. Thank you. How, how are you doing? Guys, you know I'm I'm doing pretty good. It's it is uh, when you have such a brain injury. <laughs> uh, the hard part is 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 realizing that there are problems still. I think there's an important lesson here, and I don't want everyone to be fooled by the fact that Cal's up here four months after this injury and think that everything's okay because you still have memory problems, you still have headaches. You still have a lot of other issues you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. and, and your mom, Becky and Bruce, are here. Thank you for joining us. And, and procedures aren't done yet for your son, are they? No, they're not. Um, we recently found out that because of Kyle's accident, he's developed hydrocephalus, which is water on the brain. And so he will be getting a shunt put in in the next little while to um, drain that fluid off of his brain. Yeah, and that shunt's going to run from your head all the way down under the skin into your belly. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you've got to take care of that the rest of your life. And, and Gavin, there's a take home in this. And I want you to pay attention because we have Kyle's neurosurgeon on the phone, Dr. Blake Welling. And he's from the Intermountain McKay D Hospital Center in Ogden, Utah. And, and Dr. Welling, we, we have some images here of Kyle's injuries on CT scan. And a massive amount of his skull was removed, was it not? Yes, it was, uh, on both sides, left side and right side. The only area of the bone that was left was back in the back, covering his cerebellum as well as a strip of bone right in the midline. So you had to take out 80% of his skull to accommodate all that swelling after the injury? Yes, on, uh, that's correct. And then, Gavin, this is what I want you to pay attention to. Dr. Welling, in your professional opinion, if Kyle had not made the decision not to wear a helmet that day, would this injury have been different? Gavin, this injury would have totally been avoided. He may have had a, a mild concussion, but there's no way that he would have, would have been injured so greatly if he had worn a helmet. I typically wear a helmet, and really one time. It took one time for me to be in a coma at age 25. And you might think it's not cool. A coma at 25 is not That's cool. Not cool. So are you going to wear a helmet from here on out? Yes, for sure. I see a woman in the front row, your mom, who's got a big smile on her face. And, you know, Kyle, we want to thank you for teaching all those kids out there a story that I can't, as an ER doctor, always convince people to wear a helmet. <laughs> but I think your story and being willing to come out here and share it with us is so very powerful. Thank you. Thank Best you. of luck. In your thank, you. thank you, Gavin. Thank you so much, Dr. Welling. And for the rest of you out there, if you ride bikes, motorcycles, scooters, snowboards, you ride skis, ATVs, helmet up, it saves lives.